This episode of Coffee with Kenobi is brought to you by MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. For all of your travel needs to Disney theme parks, the cruise lines, or anywhere you want to go on vacation, like, oh, I don't know, Galaxy's Edge and Batu and Walt Disney World and Disneyland, be sure to go to our affiliate link, which can be found in the show notes on the front of our webpage or on our Twitter feed, and sign up for a free, no obligation quote. We are also brought to you by One Nation Coffee, the official brew of Coffee with Kenobi. For the best coffee in the galaxy, go to www.onenationcoffee.com today and sign up for a subscription service so you never miss out on the best coffee in the galaxy. This is Andy Gutierrez from StarWars.com, and you are listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan Z. This is the podcast you're looking for. This is Vanessa Marshall, Harrison Dula from Star Wars Rebels, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. everyone and welcome to coffee with kenobi show number 278 we are your spoiler free place for star wars discussion analysis and rhetoric i'm here drinking one nation coffee out of my run disney 2019 star wars rival run weekend mug thanks to the awesome dennis keithley on a shortened show today i will be reviewing a couple of books including the new audiobook dooku jedi lost by kevin scott Later in the show, I'll be joined by CWK newsman Tom Gross for an extended news segment, and we'll have much, much more to discuss, especially concerning the passing of the great Peter Mayhew on next week's show, show number 279. I didn't want to rush that one. We've got some great things planned, and some of that depends on each and every one of you. So pull up a chair, grab your favorite coffee mug, and let's have some coffee with Kenobi. So who talks first? You talk first? I talk first. Normally, this is the part where I say, joining me for a cup of coffee is, and I bring in a guest. But this week, we don't have a guest. The way things worked out this week is we have something in mind to honor Peter Mayhew. And I really don't want to rush it. I want to honor the memory and the legacy of the wonderful Peter Mayhew. So that's the plan for next week. This week, we have a couple of reviews for you. First, I want to talk about Dooku. Jedi Lost by Kevin Scott. This is, of course, the Penguin Random House audio book release that came out a couple of weeks ago. I was lucky enough to get a advanced copy of this. I should say an advanced copy of this. And listen, the big thing with this is that there is no text. Normally, an audio book is the audio version of the book read by gifted narrators and voice actors and performers, and they are always a treat. They are always wonderful. This one takes it up to another level because we put in sound effects throughout, music. It's like a radio drama. Think the old Bud Collier Superman stuff from the 40s or the old Star Wars radio dramas, for that matter. And this thing is even better than I imagined. I was a little trepidatious, to be honest, because... I like Count Dooku a lot. I've always been fascinated by him, and I want to know more about him. But as I've always said, tell me a story that needs to be told. I just don't want to have filler. And this is far from filler. This is extraordinary. Kevin Scott has brought a new way to look at Count Dooku. It's tricky, too, and I'm not going to give away any spoilers. Maybe someday we'll do like a review show of it where we do kind of dive into detail about what happens with Dooku. But basically, this takes us through him as a child. Uh, The fact that he is the Padawan of Jedi Master Yoda and why that is and why that's a big deal. All the way through his first couple of Padawans, especially Qui-Gon Jinn. And then it all revolves also around his relationship with Asajj Ventress. And the relationship isn't really probably the best way to describe it. It's more like why they are together, why does she stick with him, what kind of spell does he have on her. It's quite haunting. It's really, really powerful. The performances are tremendous. It's captivating. I can legitimately tell you, because I listen to these things when I'm in the car, I didn't want to get out of the car. I I had to get to and from school, go to the gym, go run errands, go to the grocery store, do all this stuff, but I would just sit in the parking lot for longer than I probably should have, just listening and being so captivated by the story. The psychology of Dooku and his turn to the dark side is just fascinating. Kevin Scott had said, you know, I don't want to have basically another replay of, you know, being persuaded by Palpatine. I want it to be something else. 
And I'm paraphrasing, of course, based on other things he said in interviews. And boy, is it ever compelling. I mean, the, all of the seeds are there from the beginning, but there is a relationship with his birth family, especially his sister, and sort of him struggling with how to handle being a Jedi, what that means as far as attachments. Of course, that's a familiar motif in Star Wars, but it's never been told like this. And the way that Dooku is drawn to Sereno, the planet where he was born and where he claims is his home, is fascinating. There's a lot of stuff there with his friendship with Sifo Dyas, who, of course, is a very, very famous name from Attack of the Clones and the Clone Wars. And I really seriously cannot recommend this enough. It might be one of my favorite Star Wars stories that I've heard since probably Bloodline. That's how good it is. That's how worthy it is, I think, of you picking it up and listening to it. You will not regret it. I can't wait to talk about it some more. I think I really do probably need to do some sort of review of this thing because it is a master class in storytelling. Kudos to Kevin Scott for making this thing happen, making it come to life. I hope you do many, many more of these, my friend, and can't wait to see what else Ping and Random House Audio has in the future for this audiobook format. The other book I want to talk about is the TIE Fighter Owner's Workshop Manual, the Haynes book, The Imperial and First Order Models. It's brand new. It's from, by Ryder Wyndham, Chris Reif, and Chris Travess. These are great books uh, created through Insight Editions. This is also the company that published the Millennium Falcon Owner's Manual. And these things, I remember when I worked at Barnes & Noble looking at the Haynes Publishing books, of real world vehicles, you know, whether it be Mustangs, Corvettes, whatever. And they always have images and incredible detail with the inner workings of the vehicles and the history of them and talk about the creation of them. So this does it Star Wars style, so of course it's it's fictional, but they write it with a bit of verisimilitude or truth. There are all kinds of specs, the length, the width, the height of these things, how fast they go, which I always think is super fun. Um, how do targeting computers work? You know, which ones have Harper drives? What kind of shielding are we talking about? Now, these are TIE fighters, so of course, there are various degrees of that. And then we've got some great images. There's even an image of Alden Ehrenreich as an Imperial pilot in there. I mean, that's just one. I mean, everything, every page is full of incredible artwork and details. There's some awesome stuff here that I've never seen before. Uh, a lot of behind the scenes work. A lot of concept art, Doug Chang among others, and it's it's just gorgeous. It's like a, it's one of these great things that Lucasfilm continues to do, where they take these books and they make them like pieces of art, but they're also things you can read too. So it's very much tantalizes a lot of our our different senses, I guess you could say, because you're reading about them, you're touching this book. It's just a beautiful thing to display. It's a beautiful thing to read about. And I'm very impressed. I mean, you could know you'd know so much about these ties from this. It's got a lot of great images of the hangars where all these things are parked. And I'm really looking forward to that, especially because we know eventually the rise of the resistance ride in Galaxy's Edge, you're gonna be able to walk into one of these things. So now you can learn all, all about how they work. I mean, really, there's no stone left to turn laser cannons, um, the proton torpedoes, there's some great stuff with the ejector seat, the flight data recorder, simulator pods and how they train, which I thought was really, really cool. Uh, combat tactics, and then it's got great stuff, like I said, with the tie hanger racks and the areas where you can where they store all these things on Star Destroyers. And then how they land them, tie pilot and first order pilot suits. It does cover both the first order and the Empire. And it's cool because it also gives you the thing at the end where you can see the size and scale of these things and compare them to each other. I'm always a big sucker for that kind of stuff because it gives you a kind of a real-world vibe to something. And it's great fun. I highly recommend picking this thing up as well. So let's go ahead and take a break, as promised, and we will have an extended news segment with our good buddy Tom Gross. This is Coffee with Kenobi. Greetings. This is Obi-Wan Kenobi, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. <laughs> I'd love to take a moment before we go to our new segment and thank our wonderful CWK Patreon contributors. Because of these good folks I'm about to mention, 
be able to do so many more things with coffee with Kenobi than I ever would have dreamed. Doesn't happen without Jason Hall, Rebecca Raven, Dennis Keithley, Frank Mulder, Alexander Moylan, Ben Elkington, Melinda Wolf, Aaron Harris, Chris Gavarka, Angela Sauce, Mediocre Jedi, Jeffrey Hoban, Kurt McKellen, Yancey Evans, Dan Ream, Colby Mead, Brian Harding, Blake Weaver, Chris Hamm, Jim Capron, Caroline Maselli, Chris Metz, LJ Souter, Thea Selby, Jeff Ellis, Daz Davies, Christian Dale, Brian McKinney, Connie Shee, Jared Cantor, BJ Smith, Eric Struthers, Nick Deco, and Mark Souter. When you are a member of our CWK Patreon page, your contributions each month go towards equipment, travel, paying the expenses of running the show. And again, as we continue to grow and grow, and we're working on six years almost of coffee with Kenobi. There are a lot of things we have planned and it doesn't happen without your contributions. And you get something out of it too. The best thing you get out of it, in my opinion, is CWK Pour Over, which is our weekly show that myself, Tom Gross, and Corey Club do. We are just three weeks into our CWK Pour Over review of Avengers Endgame. In fact, this Sunday will be part three of that. We are having great conversations and the feedback from you is tremendous. There's a lot to look at for this film, and it's fun to look at it in a new way. And it's really kind of fun to talk about some other geeky topics that are not necessarily Star Wars related, but we care about popular culture, and we like to break it down. We like to have a good time doing it, much like we do with Coffee with Kenobi. So if you're interested, please go to www.patreon.com slash coffee with Kenobi, and you will be able to listen to CWK Pour Over each and every week for $5 or more a month. There are also t-shirt and coffee mug opportunities and so much more. If you have any questions, please email me, danz at coffeewithkenobi.com. And don't look now, but we're just a couple of weeks from the opening of Galaxy's Edge in Disneyland in Anaheim, California. Can you believe it? Galaxy's Edge, you're going to get to tour and ride the Millennium Falcon, drink blue milk, have a glass of fuzzy tauntaun, which is quite a fun thing to say, There's just so many things that are going to happen because of Galaxy's Edge. And you want to get there, and you don't really know how to make it happen. You know there's some intimidating things with lines and reservations and things like that, but they're really not that bad. They're not that scary. And the reason is because of MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. Their signature service and expert advice helps clients maximize their vacation time and dollar. It's certainly the service that the Zare household uses and Coffee with Kenobi as well. They offer a no-cost, no-obligation quote when you use the service, and they also proactively adjust a booking if the rates go down. They will help your family enjoy everything that Disney theme parks and the cruise lines have to offer, help plan every detail, and share invaluable tips. Be sure to go to our affiliate link, which can be found in the show notes, on the front of our webpage, or on our Twitter feed, and sign up for a free, no-obligation quote. Seriously, this is the way for you to make sure you can experience Galaxy's Edge sooner rather than later here we are in a news segment and if there is news that means tom gross is back on the show hey tom welcome back dude oh so glad to be back what a what a break it's been a long time since we've done the news because you know we did the road to uh celebration in chicago and then we did the celebration in chicago and now we're back now we're back, and it's good to have you back in the uh, on the microphone again. Uh, oh, and you. I know, of course, we've talked a lot about Celebration. I, I've had a blast just kind of revisiting our Celebration shows because it really takes you back to this, the time we have together, the time we all spent hanging out and the experiences we had. And sometimes, of course, we all got separated. And so hearing you guys recap what you did and me getting to share my stories with you for the first time was so much fun. But for many members of our Coffee with Kenobi family, they haven't gotten to chat with you since Celebration, unless, of course, yeah. they subscribe to Patreon and they've been listening to CWK Pour Over, which has been very Avengers-heavy and rightfully so. But yeah. So how, how was Celebration for you overall, and how's the Celebration withdrawal been going? Oh, man. You know, it's, it's uh, now that it's been kind of sinking in, but I have to be honest, I'm sitting here in my office, and I turn around, and it's it's like nothing has been touched Cause I don't want to like, I, I look at the pile of things that I brought back from celebration and I like, I, I want to go through it all 
just to re- remember everything, but I also don't want to touch it because I, I have a, that memory of coming home that night and just bringing yeah. everything down and setting it down. And so it's like my connection to that, to that whole weekend, but, oh man, it's, you know, in letting it sink in, it's just been, wow, such an experience. And now that the excitement is kind of settling down and we're getting into more of the, the news of, in the, in the, you know, what's coming from all of the announcements and the excitement. It just, it was such a great event and a great experience. And it's one that I will never forget because of one being able to, and I said this in our live show, but one being able to hang out with you and Corey was just phenomenal. It was so much fun. And yeah, we got some time alone to, to kind of experience things how we wanted to individually, but then I got a lot of time to hang out with Corey and then catching up with you was great. But then on top of that, meeting everybody that, uh, you know, our, our peers and other p- podcasts and our listeners and just fans in general and having conversations with them, being able to turn to anybody. I miss that. I really do. Yeah. Being able to turn to just anyone and say, what did you think about that flip over the TIE fighter? What did you think about, you know, I mean, just anything. And, and, and you can just strike up a conversation so easily. And I miss all that. No, I I do too. And the everybody hanging out and bonding, it's just for isn't it very like natural? It, it's hard to explain to people. I think we're not very active on social media, but but literally when you're talking to people online, after a while, it, when you see them, it's just like you've known them all your life. Isn't isn't that yeah. so? Isn't it? It's weird, but yes, that is that is very true. And, you know, when I met some people for the very first time, it wasn't really like for the, it was just face to face for the first time. Cause for several that I uh, met, it was like just continuing a conversation that we'd been having. And that was, that was really uh, great and strange and wonderful (laughs) all at the same time. I mean, that was so cool. That, that was so much fun. And, and, um, and what's been the hardest part about getting back into the real world? Um, well, I posted on Twitter uh, the Tuesday, or the, I guess it was the Wednesday after we were back, and I, I think I put on Twitter something along the lines of, I, "I really feel like my day is ordinary now. I want like to see a Mandalorian walking down the hall, or a BB-8, or R2D2 go rolling by my desk. Just everything became sort of ordinary." Um, it was kind of like when you get off uh, the Disney cruise or you come home from Disney World or Disneyland and you kind of just look around at your life and you're like, hmm, this is so ordinary. <laughs> but that, you know, that was probably. I haven't the, seen any mice wearing red pants. And then it's like, what? I feel ripped off. Yeah. <laughs> right. I know. And, uh, and then, and, you know, and just talking to people, they don't share that same like passion. And even with Star Wars fans that don't, haven't been to celebration, I must have been a total bore to talk to for, for years because I'd never been <laughs> to celebration, didn't really understand what it was all about. So, oh, I'm so glad to be part of the group and part of the family. And, yeah, um, man. and that, is, that is just so wonderful. And I, I hope that I'm able to go to another one at some point and, uh, and just experience that again. And, and you know, if, that just... If you're a good boy and eat your vegetables and take your vitamins, I bet you'll get to go next time. Hey, you eat lunch with me every day, and you know the vegetables I eat. That's true. I eat a lot of stinking vegetables. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> so I'm earning it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. You're already in the right direction. Oh, so man. since you've been on, uh, a lot has happened. Uh, of course, we lost Peter May, but there's been some – some wonderful things, uh, amazing things that have happened that we uh, we need to talk about. Yeah, so I guess let's jump into the news then. And now, let's see what's brewing in the Star Wars universe this week. Disney announced, uh, actually just hours before the recording of this podcast, but this week, the dates of several upcoming film releases, including three untitled Star Wars films. Of course, we know The Rise of Skywalker, which will be hitting the theaters on December 20th later this year. But three years later, on December 16th, 2022, a new untitled Star Wars film will be coming out with two others released two years apart in 24 and 26. Now, nothing else was mentioned or is really known about these films, except that one thing we do know is that Ryan Johnson has announced that he would start on a new trilogy of Star Wars films after the release of his upcoming film, Knives Out, that comes out this November. 
Now, many of the non-Star Wars films announced in this lineup have been pushed back in, in their uh, release dates. For example, New Mutants and the young adult adaptations of Artemis Fowl films will now be released in 2020 instead of 2019. Also noted in the release of Disney's films, uh, attempt to continue to rule the theater season during the holiday season. Uh, besides the, the four Star Wars films, each releasing in a December of their respective years, the next several installments of the Avatar films will release on the, in the December of the off years that there isn't a Star Wars film. So look out for Disney during those Christmas seasons. Okay. Wow. So that, did that make sense? It may know. It <laughs> makes great very sense. like, yeah. One, one thing I do want to point out though, um, you mentioned Ryan Johnson, Lucasfilm has not confirmed that these these three movies are a trilogy. That is, that is correct. Yes, they have not said that this is Ryan Johnson's or, or the Game of Thrones creators' films. While we know that those creators are working on some Star Wars things, we don't know yet what's going where or anything like that. So we want to make correct. sure that that, that is that correct. Is, Thank yeah. you. But there is plenty to be excited about. Uh, I think when I first got this, I saw this on Twitter by Chris from. Uh, who of course is a major publicist at Lucasfilm, great guy. He posted that in 2000 and what, 21, we're going to have Indiana Jones. And yes. honestly, to be completely honest, when I saw that, I thought the three stars moves afterwards all said Indiana Jones too. Cause I just, my eyes just kind of glazed over and I, and I looked around <laughs> the library for you. I'm like, Oh my gosh, Oh my gosh, more Indiana yeah. Jones. Yeah. And then I realized, Oh wait, no, it's, this is stars. Oh, okay. We've got the dates. Oh wait, look. They're two years apart. Oh, wait, we've got to wait three years after the rise of Skywalker. Uh, That's probably the most pressing thing to talk about. I personally, it's weird because I, you know, I grew up with three years between films, just like Mm -hmm. you did, you know, between the trilogies. And then, of course, this new trilogies, it's every every other year. But we had stuff to fill it in, like Solo and Rogue One. In in this Netflix era of streaming and entertainment, we're very used to rapid fire stuff. So three years, well, if you'd have asked me five years ago, is three years going to be a long wait? I'd have been like, no, that's cool. That's what I want. And then I got three years of you basically get to enjoy the movie, get a year of enjoying the movie after it comes out in the home video release and that stuff. Then you get a little bit of downtime. Then you get another year of hype for the next one. And it's great. But now, because we've been a little bit spoiled three years, the first three-year wait is going to seem significant. But with all the streaming stuff and all the other things going on in the world of Star Wars and Galaxy's Edge on both coasts and eventually in Paris, this is this is okay. And you know it's going to take some deep press, but we're going to be all right. We've still got Episode Nine to look forward to. And then once they do kick in and we've got every other year, I love that. I think that it's kind of bold in a way. But I have kind of figured out why I understand why the Marvel recipe works for Marvel, but it doesn't work for Lucasfilm. I think I'll save that for a Patreon show. But I really think I've kind of got to finally boil down to why that seems to be working better for Marvel. But so that's a long winded way of saying this uh, may at first seem a little daunting, but I think it's a great thing creatively and it gives them time to really flesh out where they're going. I don't want them to rush Star Wars. I want it to take its time and, if we have to wait three years after episode nine, hey, that's okay. It's yeah. going to be fine. It's going to be great. It's going to be really great. And I'm what, so you know, we'll be a coffee with Kenobi to kind of get each other to that three year gap. I mean, it's going to be fun. Absolutely. I'm so glad to hear that that's, that's how you feel about it. And I kind of expected you would. Um, I'm perfectly fine with that three year wait. I just think about um, how how between the uh, the Last Jedi and Solo, how many times we've had the conversation and how many times I've seen the conversation in social media and other places of too much, too soon, you know, we're losing, you know, we're losing the impact. We're becoming desensitized to the Star Wars impact because things are coming so quickly that I think this will be a nice breath of fresh air for Star Wars fans to kind of sit back and look because I, I still feel like the, the analysis of Rogue One, The Last Jedi, Han Solo, I feel like we, we've we really sort of skimmed over the surface of those films. Um, and they are films. They are, they are like 
feature films, not TV shows, not Netflix shows. We're talking these are big impacting releases of story that I feel like we just kind of rushed through. And when we were done with one, we were looking forward to the next, and there wasn't a lot of reflection. And so I think this is going to give us a chance to sort of sit back, appreciate the Skywalker saga from beginning to end, look at the Star Wars stories in between. Um, another thing that I really thought, you, you, you did a nice job of, of uh, breaking down that that announcement because it really came and it peeled off like an onion. Like, oh, movie announcements. Oh, look, there's three Star Wars movies that are untitled. Hey, look, they came two years apart, but there's, you know, I mean, there were so many like realizations. And I laugh because when you sent that text to Corey and I, it, like it took Corey all day to get back to you, to get back, <laughs> back to us. And his whole thing was like, wow, it took a while for this to sink in, but this is big news. Yeah. And, and I totally agree. Now, I don't know, you might have a feeling on this and we may not want to belabor it here in the news, but we don't know what the three movies are, but they, they do come in a, in a trilogy feel. I don't know if you feel that way or not. But So if that is the case, then what I'm noticing is the Star Wars story isn't going to fit into this plan in the next, uh, whatever, eight, nine years. Sure. Well, I mean, it, the way it stands now, you know, again, it's hard to say. Um, I think that that template, they had a lot of great ideas for that. And then they kind of they kind of put the brakes on it because it didn't get the results that they wanted. I know Lisa's talked about this a lot online, but my hope has always been that Star Wars stories will continue, whether that means through a, a some sort of a show online, you know, like a streaming mm-hmm. service show, Could be. or maybe there'll be like a direct to Disney Plus Star Wars movie someday. Wouldn't that yeah. be cool? I, you know, I don't know. At this point, it does feel like it's a trilogy because it's every other year. But that may not necessarily be the case. I I, I feel like Star Wars does work best as a trilogy. Mm-hmm. So, I don't that know. If you're so, going to tell a Star Wars story, it really needs to be an important story to tell. This is true. And I know that's always been your stance. So oh, yeah. well said. And if you know, I ever don't say that, just assume that I've been cloned or I'm a scroll. <laughs> Okay, scroll. I'll yeah. keep that in mind. Yeah. Well, I was just critical that we didn't have time to reflect back, and now we're looking forward. Maybe we need to put the brakes on and look at what's ahead of us, right Indeed. ahead of us. Always. And with the trailer release and the name for the Star Wars Episode Nine all revealed in Chicago last month, Lucasfilm released on Star Wars Day the publishing program for the journey to Star Wars uh, The Rise of Skywalker. Michael Siglin, uh, Lucasfilm's creative director of publishing, mentions that while the content will include uh, the content of the books that are coming out will include hints and Easter eggs to the new film, they will feature all new stories that follow the events of The Last Jedi. He goes on to say that we will get a glimpse of the state of the galaxy at the time and some of the battles between the First Order and the Resistance. So what are the titles? Well, here's a little taste. Resistance Reborn by Rebecca Roanhorse tells the tale of how General Organa, Ray, and Finn struggle to rebuild the Resistance. Resistance Reborn is to, is to be released on November 12th, so we'll get a little bit of time to digest that before the film. Then a young adult title with the awesome cover, and I'm not kidding, this cover caught my eye right away, yeah. is called Force Collector by Kevin Sh- uh, Shinnick. That takes place before The Force Awakens, actually, as about a boy who sets out to discover what connections his mysterious Force powers have to the fabled Jedi. Some other titles include Allegiance, which will be a Marvel Comics miniseries, an adorable golden book titled We Are the Resistance, <laughs> a Finn and Poe Choose Your Destiny book, an IDW Star Wars adventure series, along with a host of other young adult and children's books and activities, uh, books that are to be released. It's a lot to look forward to heading up to the rise of Skywalker. This announcement, I don't know if it was earlier than the last couple have been. I guess I could just Google that and try to sort of figure out the original, you know, the road to books kind of a thing. You know, the journey to the Force Awakens, journey to the last Jedi. And so we knew it was coming and maybe, like I said, maybe it's a little bit earlier. But it's cool that the book that's kind of showing how they kind of keep the resistance together after the last Jedi. We know there's a time gap between episodes eight and nine. We don't know how long that time gap is, but I feel like it's fairly significant. So there's a lot of story to tell there. You know, I'm still working through master and apprentice. I don't know about you and taking care of some other Star Wars things. So there's, there's, I feel like 
there's more and more Star Wars books coming our way. And, and that might be a thing that we might sort of go fall back on when there's a three year gap between movies. That was always the big thing. Remember after the revenge of the Sith, before we had the force awakens, whenever there was a Star Wars book that came out, it was always such a big deal. Oh yeah. It was so exciting. It seemed like it always came out around like Easter time or spring break time. And now they come a little bit more frequently and that could be an interesting selling point for us too. Because there are some stories to tell, and since it's canonical, you right. know there's that there's that hint that there's going to be Easter eggs to what could be in the future. Yeah, yeah. I, these, you know, of course, I'm always excited for uh, you know new literature and to continue building our Star Wars section in the uh, school's library. But these, the that first book I mentioned, Resistance Reborn, is the one that. I am most interested in, you know, how are they going to get this, uh, this, um, uh, resistance built back up? Cause really yeah. it all fits into the millennium Falcon, you know, when we're yeah. left with it at the end of the last Jedi, uh, I'm sure there's some strands out there in the galaxy, uh, out and about, but the core of it is quite small. Well, look, Cause so, the post series addressed that a little bit. There were a couple issues that did. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But so not, that, there wasn't much. Yeah, and uh, and I again the tie the cover sold me on that uh, Force Collector. It looks so cool, <laughs> and uh, and you know I don't know. Have you have you read many of the? Um, did you read the Choose Your Own Adventure books when you were a kid? Oh my gosh, all the time, yeah. like They're lived great. in. Yeah, yes. and so I'm so excited for uh, a new generation to experience something like that with uh, with a Star Wars book. Uh, well, Kevin be- Scott's Han Solo one when Solo came out. Uh-huh. In fact, I just read that to Mason again uh, the other day when we were waiting to get on the school bus. We like yeah. it's fun. It's, it's, he's yeah. the same author too, so that'll be great. Those are great, and of course, I'm always up for uh, the comics. I love the IDW series, and of course, the uh, Marvel comics series. So, a lot of good stuff uh, to look forward to um, from this that will lead us up to that film um, and fill in the gaps and keep us uh, keep keep just that little bait out there to keep us. Uh, coming in although i don't really need bait to go to that film and i don't think a lot of people will either so uh hey let's talk about something else that's brand new coming out this summer and that is reservations open for disneyland's galaxy's edge on may 2nd then almost immediately a notice popped up on disney parks blog stating uh that reservations are no longer available but if you stay at a disneyland resort hotel between may 31st and june 23rd you can receive a designated reservation to visit star wars galaxy's edge during your stay now dan i know you've been in touch with jim hill and some others about galaxy's edge can you do you have anything to add to this story well i mean the the big thing, you know, when it went on and you could reserve, I mean, it, it was like trying to get Hamilton tickets. It broke the Internet because everybody was on there clicking, clicking, trying to make it happen. And what was it? Less than two hours. Do you remember how many? Because they had basically. Uh, let's see. What were the dates on this thing? Do you know? I Oh, from opening day on May 31st through June 23rd. If you were going to be at Disneyland and you want to go to Galaxy's Edge, like you mentioned, you could basically book a, I think it was four hour windows. Does that yes, sound right? That's right. Yeah. That is correct. And they were all, they lasted less than two hours. And I mean, some, the la- the latest ones I think were eight o'clock at night till midnight. Wow. And, you know, so, and I don't know how many people could get in on one reservation. You know, I like it. Like, well, they, do they take, a thousand people did they take two thousand people i don't know what they did i oh, assume that yeah i know that the people who ran merchandise were concerned because we've only got four hours that might you might spend three and a half of that waiting in line at the millennium falcon i don't know i would assume that they were you know careful about how they let people in so that they could make sure that everybody could have fair access to everything because this is a gigantic thing for them obviously this is a huge money maker it's going to be a huge then it's going to affect the future of their company for the next 10, 15, 20 years. So that first impression, you only get one time. They want to make it count. So I'm looking forward to talking to Jim uh, soon so that he can let us know kind of how these reservations went. And I'm sure on looking at Lucas, and we'll talk about that quite a bit as well. Um, I do know now that, uh, and you and I talked about this before, after that through June 23rd, it's basically – People can come in then, 
right? Is that how you understand it as well? Yeah, it says on the on the blog, it says beginning June 24th, reservations will not be required for visitors to uh, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and access to Disneyland Park. Uh, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and experiences will be subject to capacity, however. Right, which will be very similar to what Disney theme park aficionados are aware of. If there are certain things you want to see, like uh, Pandora, the world of Avatar at Animal Kingdom in Florida, you need to get there very, very early. And you got to get your walking shoes on, perhaps your running shoes on, and run to that section of the park so you can experience it. Mm. I'm interested to see what they're going to do when Disney World opens because they have fast passes. To have a fast pass, so you have to have theme, you have to have already purchased your theme park ticket. For Disneyland, uh, kind of going backwards a little bit, if you're staying at the Disneyland hotels, uh, you have a better chance of getting into Galaxy's Edge as well. We'll know a lot more in the next couple of weeks because of course we're going to have a big press event right. and people will start attending and then we'll really have an idea of what's going on. They're doing yeah. a lot of cool things. Like they're already talking about the way that you can do mobile ordering uh, the theme parks. Now you can order your food in advance and you can pick it up like oh, you can right. yeah. a lot of other places. And they've already talked about the fact that um, in Anaheim on the 31st, you're going to be able to, through Docking Bay 7, okay. Food and Cargo, Ronto Roasters, and the Milk Stand are going to have mobile ordering. So that is interesting to see how they're going to do that. Now, there's just a ton of options. My goodness. Now, have you yeah. looked at the, at the food stuff that they're going to have? I, I've not. <laughs> so oh, boy. Much. So much. Oh, boy. Yeah. It's going to be so fun. Yeah, we'll and talk about right. that a lot more as we get closer to the opening. Of the much, park. much more will be coming out. And, hey, if you can't wait to get a taste of Galaxy's Edge – while we're on the topic, the Galaxy's Edge Overture, Overture Suite, a track of music written by John Williams, inspired by the themed land, it is available for you to download on most music online store apps like Apple Music, Google Play, Spotify, and Amazon, and other locations as well. If you go to starwars.com and find this location, uh, they will give you about a 30-second clip or you go to any of those. I went to Google Play and you know you can preview uh, the song, and it is, of course, very John Williams esque, very Star Wars and beautiful. So it's a dollar twenty nine, I believe, on Apple Music and Google Play uh, to get the full five minutes uh, Galaxy's Edge Overture Suite. So if you just got to get that early taste, that's the place to go. I love that track, by the way, because it sounds very much like classic. Beautiful John Williams, and it also sounds like music you'll hear at Epcot or at Soren, which is of course at the Land Pavilion at Epcot at Disney World. And my gosh, it's just it's just a perfect blend because it's very Star Wars, but it's very theme park. It's good, man. Tom, this was great. This was an expanded oh. news section, <laughs> but, but man, we've needed to have you back on to do this. So yeah, I'm oh. going to be happy to hear from you. It has been so much fun to be back, and uh, and yes, thanks for the extra time because we have a lot to talk about. So, all right, well, I will catch you next time. Sounds good. And speaking of a lot to talk about, let's uh, take a really, really quick break, and then we'll finish our conversation honoring the memory of the great Peter Mayhew. This is Coffee with Kenobi. Listening to Coffee with Kenobi, you are the podcast you're looking for. This is... <laughs> Before we get to email, I want to thank our CWK sponsors, One Nation Coffee and Mouse Fan Travel. Please support them the way they support our podcast. And remember to listen to new and archived shows of Coffee with Kenobi wherever you listen to podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spreaker, Stitcher, YouTube, our Coffee with Kenobi website, www.coffeewithkenobi.com, or wherever you enjoy listening to your favorite shows. And if you listen to the show through iTunes, please leave us a review. You can also find us on social media apps such as Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest, and would love for you to check us out there. Be sure to listen to our CWK family of shows too, including Legends Library, Resistance Reactions, Comics with Kenobi, and Lattes with Leia. Please leave a review for each of their shows as well. Be sure to subscribe to each of them individually as they all have their own feeds now. And in addition to the places I just mentioned for Coffee with Kenobi, you can find me twice a month on the podcast Looking at Lucasfilm, part of the Jim Hill Media Podcast Network, 
as well as on Twitter at Mr. Zare, M-R-Z-E-H-R. And you can find my writing on CWK's website, as well as StarWars.com, where I am an official blogger there, as well as on IGN, where I contribute articles on Star Wars and many other popular culture topics. Don't forget to check out Patreon.com slash Coffee with Kenobi to help support this show, as well as get access to CWK Pour Over, our exclusive podcast not heard anywhere else. There are also t-shirts, coffee mugs, and much more. Thank you as always for taking time out of your busy week to join us. Next week we will have our tribute to Peter Mayhew, which I am looking forward to. We want to find a way to honor this wonderful man and just talk about the great things that we know about him, memories we have, and so much more. So please send in your email and MP3s honoring the great Peter Mayhew and I will add them to the show. Have a great weekend, everybody. Happy Mother's Day. And until next time, this is the podcast you're looking for. This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for. There's no one here. Move along. Move along.